I love your post pandemic. I haven't heard that yet. That's good. <laughs> So I will start by asking about this new EP called Lost Songs Found okay. that Your Cinema Club released during quarantine, one where you collected many songs that you did in the early days of the band. Can you tell us how these songs were found and why you decided to deplo to publish them until now? I mean, we sort of, these are songs that when we were sort of 17, 16, 17 years old, uh, These were the sort of songs that we, we, we had put up on our MySpace page um, just as we were writing them. Um, and then when we recorded our first album, these are the songs that just didn't quite make the cut. Uh, obviously, there's a version of something you can work on there, which, which did make the album. But I suppose that sort of shows the sort of time capsule that we were in back then. Um, and yeah, I think we just hadn't really thought about the songs since then. Um, But I guess it was like maybe our management or record label were like, you know, there's an opportunity to sort of get these songs out here because they keep popping up on things like YouTube and, you know, torrent sites and things like that. Um, so they're kind of half out there, but, you know, we could put them out on, you know, the sort of more, you know, more available platforms like your Spotify's and your Apple Music and things. Um, and we were, we're not really precious about that sort of thing. So we're like, yeah, whatever. I think it's nice for fans to see where we came from. And, you know, it's not like we're under any illusion that these are fantastic new songs from Tudor Cinema Club. But I think it's sort of cool to see where we came from. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's been a nostalgia for us as well. Um, And it's been it's been nice to hear from other people to be like you know it just takes me back to you know 2010 when I first heard you guys and it's that sort of sound um, so I think I think it's just a bit of fun for people. And uh, were these songs written before or after the EP for words to stand on? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think it was probably after. What song? Maybe it wasn't. That's a great question. I don't <laughs> remember. <laughs> Uh, probably a bit of uh, probably a bit of both to be honest. There was probably some before and some after. I want to say after though because when we were recording the first album, we had recorded the ten songs for the first album and we had started recording Tiptoes, which is on the EP, but we didn't get it finished. So we just stuck with ten songs for the album and left Tiptoes off, which makes me think they were probably after the EP. Let's go with after. With lost songs. Uh, this EP includes the demo, as you said, of something that yeah. can work, which became one of your famous songs after being released as a single from Tourist History. And uh, why did you choose to include this song on your debut album and not uh, like not others like Not in This Town or In Pigeons Is a Virtue? Yeah, um, I think probably a lot of it was down to uh, the budget for the first album wasn't. We didn't really have much money to do, to do like a really long recording session. So we kind of prioritized, like we had our 10 favorites. I don't know. I think also we just wanted to make sure that it was, we were all like a hundred percent behind all of the songs. And I think a couple of the other songs that, that are on that EP, we were sort of unsure about, or I guess we probably ordered the songs in terms of like, these are our favorites and just those ones didn't quite make the cut. Um, We wanted to have quite a short first album that was just all very much like songs that we thought were the best. And we didn't just want to have, you know, like a 14, 15 track album with a few sort of songs that we weren't sort of 100% on. Um, but yeah, I used to love that song, Not In This Time. I was kind of sad that one didn't make the album. And speaking of tourist history, uh, your debut album celebrated its 10th anniversary last March. Uh, how do you currently perceive the essence of this first album? I mean, And it's the feeling around tourist history the same after 10 years? Yeah, I think it is. I think um, like I'm still really proud of it. I think it's cool. I think I'm yeah, really happy to have been a, been a part of it and a part of my sort of life. Yeah, I think it's it feels very much like a time, you know, which I think is fun to be part of. Like it really also just because I've, you know, obviously like lived it. So it very much reminds me of a very set few years like 2009 to sort of 2011 like for us we were just a new band touring in a van and signing to Kitsune and going to these sort of club nights around Europe 
touring these early songs and for us i think it was the year that phoenix released their uh album as well wolfgang amadeus phoenix i just remember that like 1901 and listomania and like uh, that heads will roll song was just out that a track remix that has been like on indie dance floors ever since so just really the music around then just it very much is like a real time capsule for me and it was fun to be part of like i don't want to say culture because it's not like we're a top 40 band or anything but really fun to be like you know cemented in like that sort of indie culture of like 2010. <laughs> also tourist history is one of Tudor cinema club's most successful album and you had uh, four albums and three EPs, uh, am I right? Has it ever caused you as a band uh, any kind of pressure when it comes of making new music and discovering new music uh, uh, around Tudor Cinema Club? I don't think we've ever really, we've never, like we didn't really think about what we were going to do before we did it. There was never really a, you know, with the second or third album or, or any album since, it's never really been okay, we're going to try and recreate this, so we're going to try and write this sort of album. It's always just been whatever we've sort of been interested in at the time. I think that's probably the best way to go about it. I th I don't really think you can force creativity into any sort of way, or it just comes across as not very authentic, or you're just trying to like redo something. So no, we've always kind of avoided pressure, and I think that's probably also like testament to our record labels and management over the years that nobody's ever really you know put pressure on us to do anything in a certain way or um i think it would be difficult if you did have somebody from a record label in the studio with you you know trying to push you in a certain direction because they knew it would be you know beneficial for them or whatever i don't know we've always been sort of left alone to do what we want going back to talk about quarantine this year you were forced to stop many third dates around the world with the coronavirus and however the next month you will finally play your first your first post-pandemic show at the Virgin Money Unite Arena in Newcastle and uh, what do you think will be the most difficult difficult thing to do in this show I mean it will be one of its kind you know yeah 100% I love your post-pandemic I haven't heard that yet that's good <laughs> that's what it's going to be referred to as from now on pre and post pandemic yeah um yeah i think probably the hardest thing just genuinely will be playing all songs properly because we haven't done it in so long and i feel like whenever i'm not on tour as well i just do not think about the songs like haven't listened to a single song since we stopped in probably like january and so it will take the time to sort of rehearse and get back into the zone beforehand um so there's all there's that side of it where i'll probably not feel super comfortable playing the songs because i'll have to think about it so much you know i feel like after you've played loads of shows you sort of just get into the zone of it and you don't think about it so there'll be that side of it and it'll also be the i'm obviously going to be watching everybody because it's so weird people are going to be like really spaced out and uh on like individual platforms is how it's going to work so everyone will have their own little socially distant space um outside so i think they'll be like that'll be so weird i won't really feel comfortable playing the songs it'll be so strange but i think it'll be one of those things that will be really nice to feel like you're part of you know like it's nice to feel like you're giving people something to do over the summer that's kind of almost like a normal thing to do you know obviously all the festivals have been cancelled like you're saying um so it's nice to feel like you're at least providing some sort of like respite from reality for people and giving them something fun to do uh, are you going to play these new old songs in your upcoming shows in this year isn't there a tour plan to celebrate the 10 years of tourist history or do you think it's too late for that um no, we hadn't really planned to do anything like that. Um, I think we were like alongside this this EP, we had, we had planned to release uh, a lot of new music, um, which we sort of had to hold back because of the cancellations of things. So we were very much just focusing on the next thing, really. Um, I don't, we don't have plenty of the uh, EP live at the minute, but you know, maybe if if people listen to them loads and it becomes like you know, somebody's new favorite song, maybe we'll, 
you know, be forced into it, I suppose. But uh, I think it was kind of just, we'll put them out there so people can hear them, but we don't expect them to be, you know, big hits. Um, okay, Sam, um, I think that's all. Thank you so much for, the, for this interview. And uh, hope to see you and the guys anytime soon in Mexico. Meanwhile, stay safe and see you soon. Yeah, you too. Stay safe. Nice yeah. chat with you.